system of playing with the very subtle andolits and gamma complete chords. Stop here. Sorry, uh, I can we can have an extended session later, but uh, do this now. Okay, that was Sasudhi Vina, which is very popular in the south. This is uh, Rudra Vina, which is uh, very popular, not very popular, but it's it's the Vina of the north. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'll talk specifically about my Ustad Agar Sahib's Vina. Uh, there are small variations between other Rudravinas. Uh, mainly there are eight strings. Again, here also the four main strings. Uh, three side strings, which are the chikari or the drone. There is one string on the other side of the Vina called the Laraj, which is also like a drone. This is, this is a hollow tube. And there is a swan here, and there is a bridge on top of the swan. Um, and two big resonators. This is what I was telling you earlier about Helmholtz resonator. There is a hole at the bottom, I'll show you on my Veena. Both these uh, resonators, tumbas, have a hole at the bottom which is tuned to that instrument. And uh, <coughs> um, you can hear the sound. 24 frets, same 24 frets. That's the Chikari. So you can see the contrast in the style of the two Venas. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Hear the depth. This is the Ati Karaj string. It's really low. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's as beautiful as it is. I have to stop here. Uh, so, so for example, so um, here we are talking of uh, the lowest open string is approximately at 55 hertz. So. We are talking of like seriously low frequencies, and which is why these resonators are really large, and you know they need the whole 
uh, low frequency to vibrate and, and carry and, and so on and so forth. <coughs> So, um, this is uh, Chandravina. It's an uh, adaptation of the Saraswati Veena to um, the Dagarban, the style that I learned from my stars, uh, and, and uh, an attempt to merge some of the aspects of Saraswati Veena along with some of the aspects of the Veena as by the Nostal. Um, so <clears throat> this, this has two very large tumbas, 24 frets, very wide frets because you need space to pull. Instead of eight, I have retained the same seven as in Saraswati Veena, the four main and three side strings. Um, here I've been experimenting with bridge. This is an ebony bridge, uh, but you could use, uh, typically use on or other types. Uh, this is made of teak wood which is a very hard wood. Uh, these are very thick strings and so it needs to take the tension. So this plate is a teak, teak wood, is very hard wood so it doesn't uh, bend or crumble under pressure and tension. Um, and uh, so, there, so there are a few differences between <coughs> Saraswati Veena and, and this. One is uh, the size, it's much bigger in size. Uh, it's a heavier instrument, it's a bigger resonator and this this uh, tumba on a Saraswati Veena is just a supporting tumba. It doesn't do any, there are, there is no uh, uh, sound wave passing through, whereas in this, it's been designed to be an active resonator. So there is a pipe in from this into that. It's a hollow pipe. So there is sound wave traveling through this into this. So this is an active resonator. Uh, this is a tumba resonator, whereas in, in Saraswati Veena, it's jack hood. Um, and uh, the tuning system is a little different. The South Indian tuning system from the lowest to higher is Pursa Pursa. We call it the Madhyam Gram tuning. The, the, the technical part will leave it out. Um, the typical North Indian Norvina tuning, Rudravina tuning is Sa Pa Sa Ma. So I have stuck to Sa Pa Sa Ma. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, that's this. Uh, <coughs> this particular instrument was made by a maker in Kolkata uh, uh, by the name of Mohanlal Sharma. He was a great uh, instrument maker. And uh, there was a time when I was struggling to find anybody to make an instrument, make a veena for me because uh, everybody refused. They said, veena nahi banate hai, baat nahi hai. Even some of the best art makers in Kolkata, they you know, point back, refused to make veena for me. Um, <coughs> luckily, I found this maker and Kamati is making some great instruments for me. He's been making tanpuras for me for a long time, uh, but he's now making even veenas for me. Um, but uh, so the attempt was to, so the idea in a way came from uh, um, my chote ustad, Jia Fariduddin Dagar Sahib. He once one day told me. Uh, why don't you go back to playing Saraswati Veena and see if you can if you can play Drupad on Saraswati Veena? Because I have, uh, as a child, uh, as as a schoolboy and so on, I had training in Carnatic music on Saraswati Veena. So and then I started learning Sarod. So I was playing Sarod for a very very long time. And then one day he said, Why don't you go back to playing uh, Veena? That's more suitable for for Drupad. So I start experimenting with Saraswati Veena and. Uh, understood the limitation. That's when I was also studying the acoustics of, trying to understand the acoustics of our instruments, which was uh, quite an experience in itself. And uh, then I realized the limitations and uh, started designing something which would be more appropriate to the style that um, we perform in. So that's basically what is, uh, um, yeah, it's basically what it is. I think I've covered everything here. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> there are some important things that uh, I want to quickly, briefly uh, put in here because this is another thing Dr. Vishwash Kulkarnijiji wanted me to um, address. What are the challenges today? It's damn tough to get good raw materials. It's really, really difficult to get good wood. Uh, you know, you cannot make instruments out of furniture wood and, um, and, and getting good quality seasoned wood is, is becoming really, really difficult. 
uh, there are certain important items like ivory with reason and I understand that uh, have been banned and so it becomes very difficult. So ivory, early days ivory was used as the main material for the bridge because it had the right kind of porosity. Understand something, <clears throat> we were talking about uh, energy. So when you pluck a string, there is a definite amount of energy and that energy is used uh, as a balance between sustain and amplitude. How does amplitude work? The amount of energy that's transferred into the instrument and how does sustain work? The amount of time that the string can vibrate. Now, the, the ivory had the right kind of porosity to be able to transfer enough energy to the instrument and maintain sustain. Not all materials have that quality. So you lose one or the other. You may have materials which will give you a great volume but no sustain or you may have great sustain but no volume. So we've had these kinds of issues. Um, Mass-produced electronic keyboards, of course, are damn cheap, so uh, kids are very, you know, you can't go wrong, there's nothing to go wrong. Any key you play, you know, it produces a sound. So unlike um, our instruments, um, and it doesn't take, you know, months to make. I mean, you go to a shop, you can buy. Um, and very few good craftsmen, and, and it's, it's a problem today. There aren't too many people who can make good instruments and it's all handcrafted, they're not mechanized, and so those kinds of things take time. If you have a monsoon season, because you cannot do any work on the wood. So you need it to be seasoned and dry and so on and so forth. You can't polish in monsoon, you can't do any really sun drying, nothing you can do. So there are these kinds of uh, issues. The other thing is, of course, <coughs> inconsistent sizes. I mean, there is no standardization of instruments. Huh? Uh, you take you know, 10 sitars, they will, they will all have different shapes and sizes. Why? Because they are natural ways, right? A tumba, the tumba is grown, you know, it, it's a vegetable that grows. So you can't control the shape of that tumba. I mean, you, you have an approximate size that I want a 50-inch tumba, and that's about it. You cannot control the shape in which it grows. So the, the top of the, of the sitar or, you know, or, the, or the tanpura uh, is based on the shape of the tumba. So if the shape of the tumba is like this, then the top will have to be cut like this. So it's damn tough to standardize some of these things. But at the same time, uh, it becomes an issue because there is no standardization, and each instrument sounds different. And if you order an instrument, it's your luck whether it's going to sound good or not. Um, and yeah, so unreliable acoustics comes to that. You know, I, <clears throat> I had a sitar uh, from a very uh, reliable um, uh, music instrument shop in Bombay. Um, it wasn't cheap, it was for a student. And it, and it, and it sounded dead, nothing. I, whatever I could, I did, nothing came out of it. It just sounded completely dead. And, and that's completely your luck, whether you get a good instrument or not. So this comes to... Science versus art, where how much is science, where is art, art and science of instrument making, art and science of jawari, art and science of sound holes. You know, there's, there is a lot of uh, whether sound holes are important or not important. Guitars have sound holes, Indian instruments rarely have sound holes. So, nobody understands. Um, um, okay, this is a discussion that uh, needs to happen separately, but I've had some discussions with some of the very fine instrument makers from abroad on sound holes. Their understanding of sound holes is so different from what we understand for our instruments. So uh, at the end of the day, the science and the physics has to be the same, right? But apparently they think differently for instruments, we think differently for instruments, and it works for them, it works for us. So they are completely, you know, extremities. They, they don't even match. Art and science of polish, you know, people are, uh, using laser technology and, and uh, spectroscopy technology to study the varnish that was used by Stradivarius on his violin. They believe that that's what contributed to his uh, sound, but nobody knows. So, but however, nowadays uh, there are people who are, you need to be very careful about the polish because, you know, you don't, the, the, you don't want to close the pores of the wood. And, you know, synthetic sprays and things which are used today sometimes by some of the makers, uh, to quickly churn out instruments like a mass making instrument or causing a lot of damage because they, then the instrument will come out dead because you're just shutting off all the pores. 
So the polish is a, is a very, uh, that's also a very fine art. It's done by layers and layers. You need to let one layer to dry, then you put another layer, and so and then there are different types of polish which is used on top of each other too. So there is a process to that, and that Majid will take through uh, in his session. But what I'm saying is these are very important things which make a difference. And it's very difficult to qualify these things from a science perspective. Why is the polish done in these layers form? Nobody knows. However, as an artist, we all look for clear, clean sound. And uh, <clears throat> similar response by the instrument across all frequency ranges, no harmonic distortions, uh, and uh, you know, pleasing aesthetic sound, like you've heard instruments so far, so you want it to be nice and pleasant. So that, from an artist's perspective, is what we ask for. So when we sit with Majid Bhai, this is what we give him as an instruction, this is the kind of sound. So when we do Jawari also, this is what we do. So he does Jawari, then we put the strings, then we play for some time, then we don't like, we say we like this, we don't like this, then we redo, so on. So it's a time-consuming process. So these are the kinds of things we look for as an artist. Um, it's just my personal interest in science that I've been digging into how the science of all these instruments should work. And I just wanted to share this with all of you. Thank you all. A small uh, demo on what the instrument is about and uh, why that instrument. Namaskar. I am a Satar maker. Tanpura making other Yajaru Charchagarazunje, Kubel and Laman Apelagata, Will Cooper's Kame. Tamote, Kami Vil Tumala, Tourism Mighty Deto. Tanpura actually Bonto a Boplai. A Bopla upon Bonto, Kaisa Bopla Navy. Kaikansa Gaisa Mozuki Kaisa Bopman. Had Jungli Boplasto. Shetato Pictojaza. Actually, he bakis is a very lakudas though. Bopla was in the Surat, a particular part to beg away. Bopla, a tubli, a dandy, as a part of Sagar Bernun Mantella, to main joint teller the Kurto, Sagar Dacha Purna Kurto, Satara Sokim and Tanpurazumanji, a material of Perla Zato de Yamade. When actually Ata Ali Tanpure Banta, when Ali electronic Tanpuraza Torasa Ati Taza Prajar Zalele. तमें नवीन अत्ता जे जनरेशन जे शिक्ता है, तैना हाँ तानपुरा लावने सुरात लावने, आनी वाजोने, हाँ तैना खुब कटीन होतो है, तैमें याजी सवे बरस्त मंजे अत्ता जे नवीन जनरेशन है, तैना ती वाजोने जे नी चुन कर रहे ची, तैना थोड़ी सी स्वर न्यान पैजे तेजा स and actually, the electronic change is very fast. We have a lot of fast food. We have a lot of fun. 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 वोल्टेज कमी जा झाला कि वहाँ मतलब आत्मी मशीन पे गए लेकिन तो बेसुर होतो वो तेरा अपना सोने आन पाजी क्या बेसुर लगते क्या तो मंजे सोरा आता है मैं एक्चुअली बरेस मंजे आतन जो नयून शिक्षण रहना तेरा सा सोने आन थोड़ा सा कमी आता है तो हमारे तो सोरा तला होने हाँ मत वजह भाग है तो हमारे आने Majid Bhai, do you think that the material of Tambura is a problem with the material of Tambura? Do you think that the material of Tambura is a little bit? Actually, if you think about it, you can do it in Karnataka. You can do it in Marathi, you can do it in Marathi. But now, you can do it in the same way. 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 अन्य महत्व से मंजे यहाँ तो मंजे लाकड़ा से पार्ट जास्ता है, हाँ खासा बोपड़ा सोड़ लिया नंतर, लाकड़ा से पार्ट भी जास्ता है, 
त्यामुळे हल्ली लाक लाकूड हा मिळणे कारण पूर्वी जे होते ते साखचे तानपुरे सतार म्हणजे बरेच वाद्य ते सागवानी आपण म्हणजे सागवानी म्हणतो हा म्हणजे हा विणा जो तुम्ही बघताय ना तो सागवानी आहे पूर्वी सगळे सागवानी होते त्याच्यानंतर हा आतून म्हणून जे लाकूड आला त्याचा आम्ही म्हणजे उपयोग करत होतो पण हल्ली ते झाडं तोडायचं आणि बाकीचे सगळे ते लाकडाची थोडीशी म्हणजे कमी आम्हाला जाणतो आहे आणि भोपळे म्हणजे पूर्वी जसे जे होत होते आताच्या ते जमिनीमध्ये जे शेतामध्ये ते पिकवले जातात त्यामुळे त्याचे बी बी जे असतात आणि ते त्यामुळे ते काय होतं आहे आता बाकीचे ते याच्यामध्ये लोक जे शेतकरी जे पिकवतात त्यांना मार्जिन थोडं याच्यामध्ये कमी आहे त्यामुळे ते ऊस द्राक्षे बाकीचे म्हणजे ते पिकांना त्याने जास्त हे करतात त्यामुळे ह्याची पण थोडीशी जे पीक पीक आहे थोडासा त्याचा पण कमी होतो आहे 